At the moment, that's just a normal red laser pointer he's using to line the system up. The working laser is far more powerful. This particular fiber feed here delivers yep. approximately 20,000 times the power of a typical laser pointer. And it gets worse than that. It's an invisible laser beam. It uses infrared light that we can't see, but which carries a huge amount of energy. Oh, it looks straight away. <gasps> That's astonishing. <laughs> That's like something out of James Bond. Yeah. Right. I'm utterly convinced that you've got a very powerful laser. As impressive as this display is, the dream of wireless power is looking like a choice between being electrocuted by the Tesla coil or being burnt alive. But Robert's system has a safety feature. That's a part where the optics come in to expand the beam into a safer, larger diameter where if you get uh, into the beam, you're just not going to get harmed by that. With a special card, I can make the invisible beam visible. It's really warm. <laughs> it can surprise oh you at times. my life. So, can we go and see where it's hitting at the far end? Sure. Let's go have a look. The receiving end is a quarter of a kilometre away, on the other side of the campus, but the laser beam is as powerful here as it was when it left. And this is, this is what collects that fat infrared beam. Yes. So it's the, the sort of infrared equivalent of a solar panel. Correct. And then we can uh, take that voltage and apply it to power up an LED. Or uh, I've also got a, a transistor radio here. Oh, nice. And how efficiently does that then convert the power in the beam back to electricity? We're probably really converting maybe 10, 15% of it right. into useful energy. Uh, to drive the LED or the radio. I love how it just goes in and out. And although my hand can block the beam, this does seem to be a remarkably practical system for long distance wireless power, and it even works in the rain. Uh, a little bit of rain really doesn't hurt it all that much. Um, in fact, sometimes I've had trouble noticing any difference at all. But is it genuinely, like throughout the whole range, wherever it goes, perfectly okay to not blind? anybody. With this wavelength and this kind of energy density, you could put your face into it. It's totally safe. Getting a normal laser beam in your eye can blind you instantly. Never, ever look down one. But Robert is a safety specialist. Everything else I know about lasers says this wouldn't be a good idea. And under his guidance, I'm about to demonstrate what makes his system different from almost every other in the world. Really feel the warmth there. All the power of that laser safely spread out and at a wavelength that won't even damage my eyes. I'm convinced it is possible to beam power to our gadgets without any wires safely and over enormous distances. In fact, huge distances are just what it lends itself to. In fact, what really got this whole thing rolling is the NASA Centennial Challenge, which was a, a space elevator project, if you will. Beam power to a, a vehicle that could climb a tether all the way into space. Not only could we beam power up to space, but also back down. Some groups are looking at putting lasers like these onto satellites to beam power from their efficient solar panels to anywhere on Earth through the atmosphere and at any time, day or night.